toys and games, technology to its buckets, talking nerdy to you. Some other musical stuff. So with my quarantine downtime, I've been catching up on my pop culture because I'm a bit behind the times. My video game backlog is pretty embarrassing. I miss a lot of the exclusives from this gen. I finally started Doom Eternal. I'm a big Doom fan, so that's pretty exciting. Played Black Mesa, which was great. Very good job by the Crowbar Collective. I played Her Story, which was a really unique game. Finally got around to Gravity Rush 2, which I enjoyed, but the controls really frustrate me sometimes. And, oh yeah, there was this indie game, uh, you guys have probably never heard of it, it's called The Last of Us Part 2. Yeah, not a lot of people know about it, but, um, I think they could have something here. Before we get started, I'm just gonna explain how I'm gonna structure this. The first part of this will be non-spoilery, so, you know, I'm just gonna be talking about general gameplay and, and things like that, updates. After the second part, I will dive deep into the story and lots of spoiler territory, so... Check the chapter so I don't ruin anything for you. If you've somehow <laughs> still haven't gotten around to it even later than I have. So first, a little bit of background. So my first Naughty Dog game was Crash Bandicoot Warped. And then I think I played Crash Bash after that and then went back to Crash 2. I don't think I got around to Crash 1 until I played the uh, the Insane Trilogy. But of course, I, like everyone else, was blown away by Jack and Daxter and the just in incredible level of fidelity and the strong sense of environment and and sense of adventure that that game had but since being being the youngest sibling i kind of experienced all those games like second hand of after after my siblings got to play them so the first one that i really jumped into myself and only myself was the uncharted series and once again like most people i was blown away by the insane production values of that game yeah loved it played all of them Except Lost Legacy, to my great shame, I haven't gotten there yet. It's kind of funny because I didn't get around to The Last of Us. I kind of skipped it. I vividly remember the reveal trailer, but even though I loved Naughty Dog's games, I was just busy with other things at the time. The first time I finally got a bug in my butt to play it was after going to the first PSX and just hearing everybody talk about it, like any panel that I went to. Like, of course, I knew who Troy Baker and Laura Bailey were, and they were there, but I hadn't played the game yet. Uh, so I kind of got a little bit of it spoiled for me, unfortunately, because they did this this great panel on music and video games, and they talked about how in the hospital scene in the first game, how the music would swell up, and like they would turn all the all the sound effects and the voices down, and it would just, they would raise up the music, and how powerful that was, and I was just kind of blown away by that and i said damn i gotta play this game <laughs> not knowing that that was kind of the climax but i still very much enjoyed the first game so much so that i became uh, sort of obsessed with it <laughs> like many people i consumed pretty much any kind of official media on it you know I, I watched all the behind the scenes that i could get there's so much great fan art and like opinion pieces that i've seen and read i saw the one night live which if anybody any fans of the last of us haven't seen one night live you definitely need to check that out I've listened to the official podcast, and I'm super jealous of Spicer. I've played the first game numerous times. I've shown it to several people. To anybody who would give it a chance, I said, you have to play this game because it is truly something special. It's one of the greatest arguments that anyone could make for gaming. I'm already an emotional guy, but the soundtrack always moves me anytime I come across any piece from it. Just so lovingly crafted. My vocabulary fails me when I try to explain my connection to this game and how special it is. But I hope that maybe recording this messy, gushy love letter to it <laughs> kind of helps. Yeah, but I, I love everything about it. I love the gameplay. I love the UI. I love the sound, the world that they've built, the art, the characters, the acting, the directing. The, the, the multiplayer is fantastic. And the more I play it, the more I appreciate it. It's one of the greatest games of all time. Being there for the reveal trailer... I think it was the, no, it was the third PSX. Oh, man. <laughs> it still gives me chills to think about it. The The energy in that room was insane. When the camera panned out and we saw that firefly on the stop sign, oh, that place fucking exploded. When we got the Wayfaring Stranger cover on stage, got a little emotional. <laughs> it was so good. And of course, I attended all the panels and everything. I didn't want to spoil anything, so I didn't watch the last couple of trailers. Uh, probably go back and watch them now, but 
<laughs> if I can handle them emotionally. <laughs> but of course I knew I was going to get it. So there's really no, there's really no point. Yeah. And like I said, in the 2020 episode, there's so many unfortunate things about the leaks and the timing at which it came out and everything like that. But luckily I avoided any of the, any of the leaks. So I, I just kind of stayed away from the internet. As soon as I saw the last of us two leaks, I just went cold Turkey. I complete, I completely quit the internet for like maybe a week or two. The reason that this has taken me so long to put out, aside from the length it takes for me to edit it, is that the game take took me a long time to get through because for multiple reasons. I wanted, first of all, I wanted to take the time to appreciate it. I wasn't going to rush through it just to get to the ending because I care about the story and the characters so much that I was, that would be doing a disservice. I wasn't going to play it like a reviewer. I wanted to be in that world for as long as I could. I spent so much time in photo mode. I'll probably, I'll see if I can post a link to some photos that I've taken, some choice cuts, because if, I've probably taken way too many. But I spent a shitload of time in the photo mode, walking around the world and admiring the incredible amount of detail in the level design and the world design and the character animations and everything. So that's one reason. The other reason is my... God, the emotional and psychological toll this game has taken on me. <laughs> it is, it's not an easy game to get through. I'm not, I'll, I'll talk about that later, but I mean, I, I even had to take breaks while listening to the podcast. It just got me too emotional. Let's talk a bit about the game from a game aspect. This game definitely has the design mantra, maybe intentionally or unintentionally, but they definitely followed the show don't tell mentality. Of course, Naughty Dog is famous for their attention to detail. You know, some of the crazy things I noticed, like your guns will get wet if you go through the water. And then when you go to look at them, they'll still be wet. The The tide uh, will erase your footprints. There's six different levels of breathing, like sound and animation for depending on how exhausted your character is or how scared they are, things like that. The, their mouths will be open or closed based on proximity to an enemy, just insane. I can't believe some of the things they managed to do in this game. If it was just a few hours of the beginning, just like walking around the first level that they put you in, I would have been satisfied, but the game gave you so much more. I have to give a shout out to the sound design. It is insane. Naughty Dog's always had great sound in their games, but this is on another level. I mainly played in, in 5.1 DTS. Uh, I sometimes used uh, the stereo headphones effect, which still sounded good too. But for most of the game, I played it in 5.1. Maybe I'd play through it again doing uh, doing just a stereo headphone option. Uh, they made great use of 4K and HDR. The uh, the spores sometimes you'd see the spores like especially in like a dimly lit area. As I mentioned, it's absolutely brutal. It's there's moments that are really hard to play, but they they really played up that angle and. As, as they've said in an interview, they, the point is they show you how brutal it is. You, you know, you have to be the one who, who pulls that trigger. You have to be the one who, who kills that person. They really make you feel the impact of each life that you take. The way that the camera faces the person that you choke out on the stealth kills, the NPCs, they all have names and they'll call each other out. I heard some people around like the launch of the game say that the, the, it was more of the same M more uh, did we play the same game <laughs> i don't see how you could say that i mean it didn't change genres it's still the last of us i mean it's not suddenly going to turn into an arcade racer it has evolved in in every way the pacing was fantastic to be fair i did break apart this game and, and play it in several chunks but they did a really good job of balancing the quiet moments, the exploratory moments, and the intense gameplay moments. The way that the game transitioned in and out of cutscenes, I'm sure, helped a lot. And that was pretty impressive, too. But you never know what was around the corner. You never knew it was going to happen. And that was such a good part of the experience for me. It, it felt like... It felt like the story spanned multiple games. Like I thought, I thought I knew where the head story was heading, and I was like, "Okay, it's going to end here." And, oh shit, that is not where it's ending. Oh, okay, I think I know. No, no, I never really had any idea where it, when it was going to end. I never wanted it to end, but I never really knew. They do a really good job of making you never feel safe. They really put you in this world. I love the upgrade, the weapon upgrade systems. The puzzles are well designed. 
the environments feel so incredibly real, like actual places that were lost to the infected and reclaimed by nature. The animations are fantastic. I noticed the characters move and sound differently, like when they're at rest and then when they're in combat. I really appreciated the individual difficulty options of how you could tweak the different parts of the game. Uh, side note, as an amateur musician, I totally squealed when I played the guitar for the first time. <laughs> I spent way too much time playing the guitar. It's so cool. I'm really, really excited for the multiplayer. I would love to see what they can do with that. And the combat is such a dynamic sandbox. It's crazy. I, I noticed that in Uncharted 4, they took some lessons from The Last of Us. And then I noticed from The Last of Us Part 2, they took lessons from Uncharted 4. They built such a great formula out of it. They made good use of the controller. You know, the, the speaker and the light bar. I've, I've always appreciated the way that the game feels as far as like the gun play. The feedback from the guns, both visually, from an audiovisual standpoint and from the controller standpoint, very satisfying. The upgrades to the melee system I really liked. I don't play with listening mode ever. I mean, I might if I play it on like, you know, grounded difficulty or something, but that's just not the way I like to play. I like to kind of be surprised and the, the AI is, is really good at doing, <laughs> doing flanks. The level design, as I've sort of touched on, is so great, not even just from the visual standpoint, but the gameplay standpoint, so many different ways to approach the combat encounters. Even just dying numerous times and trying new strategies really kind of opened up my eyes of all the different ways that you can play, especially some of the new uh, weapons. So with all that out of the way, we're going into spoiler territory. So as mentioned in the Last of Us podcast, they didn't try to recreate the first game, which I really appreciated. Fucking Naughty Dog did it again with the surprise second half. <laughs> I was so hesitant at first. I was so hesitant with Abby. I, I didn't want to play as her. I was so confused. I said, why are you doing this? Why would you, why would you do this to me, Naughty Dog? The first time I was playing as Abby after Joel's death, I was, I just put the controller down and I said, no, <laughs> I literally put the controller down and said, no, I'm not doing this. What do you, why? I knew I had to trust them because there had to be a reason, you know, there was, as Neil and Troy both said, you know, this is a story that needed to be told. So I owe them that from the first game. I'll, I'll, I'll trust you. I'll see where this is going. I don't like it, but I'll see where this is going. And as it went on, it got harder and harder. And it's, it's so brilliant the way that it plays with your motivations and everything playing as Ellie and then seeing seeing the path of destruction that Ellie has left from a different side. E even even still, it played on that again because as Abby, you have to fight Ellie and Tommy and I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I was just like, oh, uh, like intentionally missing. <laughs> you know? Oh man, this game, this game just it totally freaking wrecked me. I, I cried like a baby multiple times. Of course, the hard thing was Joel's death. That was the first gut punch, of course. And it's just, the game just did not let up. <laughs> it, was, it was so hard to progress. That's why I had to keep putting the game down. I had to take a moment. I had to grieve. I, I, had, I had to pace myself. I couldn't, it was just too much. It was, it was just so bold to, to d introduce Abby the way they did. The more I think about it, the more fucked up and also the better it gets. Like Ellie, and the doctor, you know, Abby's dad, and every other NPC, really, I guess, for that matter, would be just like random nobodies to each other. But in the instance of these characters, it's the entire world. That's Abby's entire reason. That's Ellie's entire reason. You know, and they're just... Each of these people that you're killing is an, is an actual life that you're taking. It's not just an, an enemy in your way. It's not a, it's not a, a checkpoint. And I, I liked how the scars and the wolves reflected the central conflict, uh, kind of like Bill did in, in part one. In, in the podcast, Neil talks about how in the first game, they would, they would up the stakes, right? How to push how far Joel is willing to go. And they do, they do that brilliantly in this game too. And they show, you know, what, what can happen when you just keep escalating. Going back to the show, don't tell, the, the gameplay even reflects those themes. In the podcast, Neil talks about how if the player doesn't like Abby, 
the game doesn't work. It's not successful. Just like in the first game, I guess, if you didn't have a connection to Ellie, the game is not successful. And when I got to the last fight, I, I didn't want to do it. I, it took me forever to finish the last fight because I just didn't, I didn't want to keep doing this. I felt, I felt the way that, and just, it's such a beautiful and tragic and powerful moment that the last fight, it's so well executed. Just the, the animation and the acting and the gameplay. Like, I, I died because I didn't want to keep fighting anymore. And so to answer, yeah, they were successful. They were very successful. I, I wanted Yara and Lev and Abby and maybe Owen and Mel. I wanted them all to be happy and Manny. I wanted them all to be happy and I wanted, I wanted Ellie. I wanted Ellie to have her life. I wanted Ellie to have her life with Dina and, and her not letting it go. It was so hard to watch and I can't talk about it too much because I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna, just gonna turn into a puddle. But, um, this is gonna be a hard one for me to replay. I'm not, at this moment, I'm not sure when and maybe even if I will play it again. It's so, it's so good as a game. Was not even from a story standpoint, just as a, from, as a game that I would love to play it again. And I would, you know, I'm sure there's some things that I missed. And in that way, in that regard, I would love to play it again. <laughs> if I could just turn off my brain, some highlights for me, the, the fear of heights that Abby has, they did a really good job of inducing that sense, that sense of fear whenever she looks down. I loved, I loved the little touch of Dina humming take on me. One thing that I have to mention that probably doesn't get mentioned that often in other reviews is the uh, all the side stories you know all the the lore and the pickups and everything obviously the first game did that really well too but in the first game they had the uh i believe his name was ishmael that whole side story and then in this game just all the little slices of everybody's life that you got to all the heartbreaking stories that you came across of people that have come before and after you and sometimes even people that you ended up meeting and I love, I love that they had to get one last gut punch in when they, when they put that song in the credits too. This is a, a final twist of the knife. One thing that was really crazy to me was when the dogs first showed up. I thought that was a really interesting choice from a gameplay perspective and from, cause as, as soon as they showed up, man, I'm sure this is probably something that they had in mind, but as soon as they showed up, I was like, oh my God, I have to kill this dog and it's not going to be fun. I don't want to kill this dog. <laughs> And they turned it around so well with, uh, with Abby's dog. Another thing that was really great about this game is the, it's kind of hard to articulate, but the, the synergy between the gameplay and the script. There was a large variety of enemies in the second game. The game works so well that you could have just clickers or just humans, but the interplay between them that was sort of introduced and left behind and perfected in the second game and Obviously, like, you know, the, the stalkers had a lot more personality in this game and the way that they could ambush you. I jumped so many freaking times from the stalkers. And then, you know, once I got wise to their game, I was kind of watching out for them, but they were still really intimidating and they moved so well that you hardly got a look at them. But for like every, everything about them, the, the visual design, the animation, the way that they interact in the in the gameplay and the way that they utilize the environment it's just crazy obviously a lot of people would mention the rat king cuz the rat king fight was so unbelievable it was not it was totally unexpected for me it was kind of funny because i used the custom difficulty to kind of make my resources scarce and you know if you play any kind of survival game you know, if you have a whole lot of resources, uh, especially a linear survival game, you have a lot of resources. You're like, oh, must be a bias fight coming up. And I was throwing everything in the kitchen sink at this thing. It was such a great fight. And, you know, I, like, I thought I was safe running around, and then suddenly it breaks through a wall. Unbelievable. So scary. So well done. <laughs> There's all the different phases of the fight, too, where the other part splits off and you have to fight it. And it's That whole hospital section was amazing. 
the horse section in the beginning. Any, any of the horse sections were great. The truck with Jesse, how the infected came out of that out of nowhere. You know, there's one bench that I got to where I was messing with my weapons and I just started getting choked out of nowhere. <laughs> so crazy. The red tunnel, that was amazing. The whole hospital, the, the recurring nightmares that Abby has, the uh, flashback that Ellie has with the goat. Of course, I'm sure many people will talk about the museum, how, how great of a moment that was. So well designed, so well executed. Um, the stadium, the wolf stadium, that was really cool. That felt so lived in, and so alive. Uh, the whole Haven section, absolutely bonkers. Especially when the fires start. Oh, unbelievable what they do in this game. The entire farmhouse section. God, I did not want Ellie to leave. Oh, she broke my heart. In conclusion, in conclusion, just bravo. Everyone involved. Neil and Haley and the entire Naughty Dog team, everybody that they outsourced to, to make, to make this game happen. Of course, the, the actors, cause some of those scenes, I, I can't imagine how hard they were to shoot, even to animate and even the people doing the promotional things and the, the podcast. And, and as much as you broke my fucking heart multiple times, you, you have my trust. And I'll be forever grateful that this game got made and I, that, and that I got to experience it. I mean, I wouldn't do 45 minutes of recording talking about this one game if I didn't like it. At least a little bit. It, it's, it's an amazing game in every aspect and it's somehow even greater than the sum of its parts. Absolute masterpiece. I'm, I'm still reeling from it. I'm still processing it. I'm still feeling it. Anyway, I hope that, uh, between my, all my sighs and breaks, all my emotional pause <laughs> that you gained something out of listening to this might do some more game reviews in the future. If I feel like it, if you guys respond to it, and this is one I had to do even just for me talking through it. It's almost like therapy. <laughs> I would love to hear anybody's thoughts out there. This is a game. I think I could talk about for hours and debate the merits of let's get into a Twitter match. Cause I will gladly fight for this game. And you know, anybody who, plays this game and it isn't successful in the same regard you know they didn't agree with the choices that were made that's totally fair but what really gets to me is the people who just write the game off from you know some of the spoilers or hearing about not 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 directly playing it themselves and experiencing it themselves i just i honestly i just feel bad for them and i love i love how neil said how he responded to people being like, you know, you, you disrespected the characters. And he says, you know, no, nobody loves them more than we do, except for maybe Troy Baker. <laughs> it, it cleaned up at the game awards too. It, I think it broke records for the amount of uh, awards that it gained, which it definitely rightfully so it should have Laura, Laura Bailey's acceptance speech. She did such a good job. She's, she's a great actress already, but you know, this hopefully proved it in a lot of people's eyes. There's so much more to say, but I feel like I've rambled enough already. And if you've made it this far, thank you. Look for the light. May your survival be long, and may your death be swift. Movies and games, technology too. It's Marcus talking nerdy to you. Some other musical stuff. Do you enjoy the show and want to help it grow? Don't hesitate. Like, share, and donate. Total side tangent, if you guys like The Last of Us, you should check out Ashley's acceptance of her BAFTA award. She's such a treasure. And, uh, Ashley Johnson, you know where to reach me. <laughs>